This job. We try to save as many people as we can. Sometimes that doesn't mean everybody. But you don't give up. What's going on, y'all? Neo Synapse for the Superpower Review, coming at you with another movie review. It's the first one in a long time. Uh, so let's get right down into it. Captain America Civil War is by far the best overall addition to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. An argument can be made for Iron Man 1, Guardians of the Galaxy, and Winter Soldier, but we're splitting hairs at that point. Subjectively speaking, I think Civil War is an overall better movie. Iron Man, Guardians, and Winter Soldier all have elements of them that are better than Civil War, but as is often the case, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. The Dark Knight is still my favorite superhero movie of all time, but if you take away Heath Ledger's performance, then the conversation becomes much trickier. So let's get down to it. In broad strokes, the original Civil War comic storyline by Mark Miller began with a devastating occurrence that resulted in the loss of many, many lives. And it will, um, well, it all revolved around a superpowered being, you know? Yeah, so basically in these comics, everybody's trying to save everybody or kill everybody, and they all got superpowers, so... Some guy with superpowers did something and killed a lot of people, basically. Um, the global outrage led to uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. instituting the Superhero Registration Act. And what that would do is, basically, um, it would out you as a superhero. And you had to be registered and under the, uh, the command of the government if you wanted to continue your heroics. So, no more anonymity, no more freedom to use your abilities as you deem fit. Iron Man led those who supported the act, and Captain America led those against it. In the comics, loyalties were tested, and heroes did things you'd never think they would do, and still call themselves heroes. So in the MCU, on the, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe uh, version of Civil War, is a little different. Instead of the Superhero Registration Act, we have the Sokovia Accords. Now in the movie, 117 countries came together. To form these accords after another occurrence of collateral damage takes place in the beginning of the film. This was the tipping point after, you know, the tremendous loss of life that occurred during the Battle of New York, the takedown of S.H.I.E.L.D., and the literal destruction of Sokovia. New York. Washington, D.C. Sokovia. Okay, that's enough. Captain, people are afraid. Uh, whether the Avengers were acting in our best interests or not isn't the issue. The fact is that lives were lost, billions in damages accrued, and the Avengers walked away without responsibility. And all of this happened when nobody asked the Avengers for their help in the first place, at least not officially. As you've all seen uh, from the trailers, Iron Man is for the Accords, while Captain America is not. Iron Man sees the team as the best hope for the world, but the team needs to be kept in check. They can't keep running around beholden to nobody because disasters like Sokovia will happen again and again. And if it does keep happening, there'll come a time when the people they're trying to save will be the same ones coming after them. Captain America also sees the team as the best hope for the world, but he also knows the dangers of government agendas. The very organization the love of his life Peggy Carter founded, S.H.I.E.L.D., was secretly infiltrated by HYDRA and began to systematically bring the world to a place where security and safety were more important than privacy and freedom. Governments are run by people and people have agendas. So what happens when the, when the Avengers are asked to go somewhere where they think they shouldn't go? or to not go somewhere that they think they should because of governmental agendas. And also the people on these committees, they change over time, which means agendas change over time, which means the purview um, is going to change too. So how do you live with the lives you could have saved or the enemies you could have stopped if not for the if not for some country, you know, not willing to agree to the Avengers aid because of money or politics or something like that? So all of this comes to a head when uh, the Winter Soldier resurfaces. He becomes central to the disparity between viewpoints and it leads the team to split with each side calling in aid to fill their ranks. All the while they're unaware of the larger threat looming 
in the background. So obviously I'm not going to spoil anything for you, but suffice it to say, you will not be disappointed by what is being showcased on screen here. Ideology is, a, is as much on display here as fight choreography. And they both leave you wanting to see and hear more. The additions of Black Panther and Spider-Man were welcome, and I enjoyed them immensely. Black Panther in particular was incredible. This is the first time we're seeing him on screen, live action, and it did not disappoint. Chadwick Boseman, um, who plays T'Challa, aka Black Panther, actually created his own African accent based on accents found within various countries of Africa. You know, he also has a background in martial arts, and that really shined through in certain out-of-costume sequences. He even created the general fighting style for the character on screen, which is pretty impressive dedication to his craft, if you ask me. He was probably my favorite part of the movie, but uh, don't let that trick you into thinking anybody else, you know, like they didn't get their due or something like that. Spider-Man was another thing. Fantastic. Uh, any fears that I had about the costume were wiped away when I saw it on screen. His movements, uh, the wit, intelligence, and his youth especially were all on display. And I feel like we finally get a Spider-Man that's true to the original character. I love Garfield, and I love McGuire's take on the wall crawler, but they always, you know, felt a little too adult, especially for being origin tales. But the Russos and Feige, that's uh, Kevin Feige, have gone on record as saying they wanted their Spider-Man to own his youth. He's a kid dealing with acne and homework, as well as being a superhero. He's also got this pseudo-confidence when the mask is on that hides his real insecurities as like this fumbling teenager. He's like Marvel's Clark Kent. They did that perfectly here, and I hope to see more in Spider-Man Homecoming whenever that drops. All right, but back to the ass kicking. I gotta tell you, Black Widow, she has been pretty, pretty good throughout all these films, but for her being an assassin, I think the tone of the Marvel Universe, um, outside of like the Netflix shows, they, they don't lend and lend itself to to, to, the, to her style, or even to Hawkeye's style for that matter. But in this movie, the best fight choreography I think she had throughout the movie. I think she, her fight choreography was the best, hands down, hand to hand combat. I'm talking about. It's certainly better than any she's had in the past. Hard hitting, and, and it's fitting for her background as an assassin. Everyone got their action and it was a glorious thing you know the the airport fight scene and the trailers are always teasing it definitely doesn't disappoint in a particular ant-man he nearly steals the show with with his scene so be on the lookout for that i mean fantastic stuff you're gonna see um but you know i have to bring in the negatives as well because every movie has its flaws and one of the major ones i had was uh zemo um if you're uh a fan of the comics, you know about Baron Zemo in the world of Captain America. It's a different take on the character. It's a talented actor and a compelling story angle, but it could not make up for the thinness of his actual part in the movie. Uh, Marvel always has an issue with their villains, and while this time it's not as bad as usual, it's still there. Um, I also, I'll point out that some people may not like how the conflict between the two sides is resolved because of how it was done. But honestly, I, I don't think it could have been done any other way and still be true to the characters and to the narrative um, in the cinematic universe that's been created here. Uh, but this new phase of Marvel movies is going to be very, very interesting. Um, now, this is something we'll be discussing in the podcast sometime next week. But inevitably, there will be comparisons between this movie and Batman v Superman because of their similar premise. It's going to be very easy to wage fanboy wars because of this, but please, a word of advice, respect the differences in the actual goals the filmmakers were going for. Add to that the completely different tones they desired, and you'll see it's not a one-to-one -one comparison. We will definitely talk about um, our preferences in the podcast, so stay tuned. Um, at any rate, this one is a definite feast for the eyes, so see it in IMAX if you can. Um, I rate movies based on a nine category scaling system that I developed and for this movie it translated into a 4.5 star quality rating. So yeah, I'm definitely in love with this movie. There's lots to digest on a personal and political level 
and it has superior action and storytelling, um, even for the few flaws that it does have. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Stay tuned sometime next week for the spoiler filled podcast. But enjoy yourselves. See y'all next time inside the review. <laughs>